Hey guys, this is Tony with NTV Dropping, and here we combine mental health and mountain biking to create this awesomeness that I call my channel. Now, let's get in the video. What's up, you guys? Today, we are going to be reviewing the GoPro Hero 10 Black. This is a video that should have been out a longer time ago because I literally got it like the day it came out. And I was like, cool, I'm gonna finally have a video where I'm gonna release this thing and everyone's gonna see it. I'm gonna catch the wave. Well, that's obviously not the case. So I hope you still find value from this video. I think you will because I have a very unique perspective on this thing in comparison to most people maybe. We tested it mounted to the chest. We tested it mounted to a full face helmet. We also tested it in uh, bright daylight sunlight. We also tested it in rain. So you're gonna really get a really good feel for how this thing is going to perform in this video. One of the things I did different in this video is I took this thing out and used it like a normal camera, a normal video camera. I'm a photographer, I'm a videographer, I do it professionally. I am also gonna share with you the settings that I use to basically make this thing work its magic. So again, you get the Steezy case, which is dope. I don't really care about packaging. It's really not the point. Visually, the only thing that you're going to see different is that it's blue. And then you're gonna get a much nicer screen because the old screen was like, uh, 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 uh. It was like lagging the entire time. Probably the number one thing that I love most about this new GoPro Hero 10 is that it actually works like an iPhone. You can actually scroll through the things. It doesn't lag. I have not once had to take out the battery. Oh, I just broke it. I have not once had to take out this battery and like do a full reset of it because that is the number one thing I hated about the GoPro 9 Black is that it was just so laggy. They updated the processor in here so it is a much more powerful processor so it can handle all the awesomeness that this thing could actually do. The fact that this thing is much more intuitive now and is easier to use it makes it more like a professional tool that I can actually take and use on the field. So the First clip sequence you're gonna see is me using it as a camera. And I did two different sequences. And the shout out to my buddy, Anthony Rodriguez, who came out and helped me out. He is uh, one of the racers on the SpokeX race team here in Temecula, California. So here's that first clip in the natural mode, using it as like just a normal camera and like a cinematic sequence. Check it out. So it looked pretty dope, pretty good, but like again, it's not as good as the flat mode when it comes to color grading. And I'm gonna show you the next clip right now that with another sequence that we did with Anthony and in the flat mode, and it looks so much better. So as you can see, pretty dope. I was very happy with the results that I got. We just went out there real quick, just did a quick little thing and it came out pretty nice. So the next thing I'm gonna be showing you guys, I'm gonna show you how this thing performs in the rain because the GoPro is touting that they have this new glass that the rain is more rain resistant to. So that's one of the things I never thought about doing. When it was in the rain, I'm not gonna use a GoPro. It's gonna look annoying. It's gonna be super hard to keep that thing clean. So I said, hey, look, GoPro saying that they made that a little bit easier. When there's rain, it'll fall off. It'll, it'll clean a little bit easier. So let's check that out and see how that went. Hiker, or biker. Oh God. Woo, 
Watch out for them branches. Oh my gosh, they hurt. All right, apparently the water will just come right off this glass. I'm gonna try it out and use my finger to see if we can clean it. Let's see what that does. All right guys, so it wasn't bad. I think it was pretty good. Usually when I would, you know, kind of try to clean that glass off, it would come off pretty well. Like I would think about taking the GoPro in the rain, depending on where I was going. If it had to be, it would have to be like a special trail that I just kind of want to just remember the day. Probably wouldn't do anything professional with it, but then, hey, you know what I mean? I think that that was a good move by GoPro. And um, again, makes me feel like it's a good all around like professional tool that I can utilize in various circumstances and weather and things of that nature. So my buddy Francisco, um, he did the face mount. He puts it up on the, he has a full face helmet and then hooks it to the face mount. And that is like considered the best place to hook a GoPro if you wanna have the most stable, like gimbal-like footage possible. I would say after that is the chest. So here is Francisco and let's check out that footage. He recorded it in the natural mode. So there's no color grading and you can kind of really get a feel for how nice these colors are just naturally out of camera now. All right. I'll go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this next series of clips is going to be a low light test. You are actually gonna see the color shift in the beginning of the clip. It's going to be dark and it's gonna to go to light because what the camera is doing is shifting up to a higher ISO to brighten up everything so it's actually visible and the stabilization can still continue to work appropriately. And I believe all this works together and works amazing. Check it out. Before we dive into the clip, I just wanted to let you guys know that this is mounted to my chest on a GoPro harness. That's it. No gimbals. All right, let's roll with it. <sighs> Slow. Oh. Slow, slow. Whew. I like this right here. All right, you go faster for this thing, because I jump it too.
All right, so this next clip is like the complete opposite. So it's right at the time of day in the morning when the sun gets to the worst spot in the sky where it creates harsh shadows and very harsh highlights. So you're gonna see this mounted to my chest and the mode that it will be filming in is the flat profile, which looks amazing even in these harsh conditions. This is basically the worst conditions to film in period with whether it be GoPro, professional photography, anything. So this is how it's gonna look. All right guys, so I'm gonna give you a sneak peek into my very own GoPro so you can set your GoPro to the exact same settings that I have set in here. These are my settings. Take a look, switch them accordingly. This is my 4K slow-mo at 120 frames per second. All right guys, so the GoPro Hero 10 Black is definitely worth purchasing and it is definitely worth upgrading from the Hero 9 Black to the 10 Black. That's usually not ever said. Usually if you have the past model, like you know if you have like the iPhone 9 and it's usually not worth it going to the iPhone 10, but in this case, because of the faster processor, it is definitely worth it. Way better pictures, way better performance out of the touch screen because if the touch screen and then the system doesn't work in and of itself then it's, it doesn't matter what it can do if it feels 4k 120 frames per second or whatever it doesn't matter because it just is laggy and doesn't work and is a hassle to use which means you can't create in any way that's meaningful it's just a frustration like I'm on my ride to have fun and capture the fun I'm not on my ride to battle with my camera gear it defeats the purpose so guys, thank you for watching. It's Tony with NTB Drop-In. Stay strong, keep pedaling, guys. I'm gonna be dropping out today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and do all that. And definitely, if you're thinking about picking up the GoPro Hero 10 Black or any other of the accessories that I've listed in the description, please use those Amazon affiliate links. It helps out a ton. Talk to you soon.